Tri Pedal Reviews. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Light Pedal by Game Changer Audio. Now back many years ago, the first spring pedal I ever picked up was a Screamin' FXE Verbia. And that pedal had one particular function that I really enjoyed that was kind of unique. And that is, you could set it to the point where the spring tank was so driven that it went into self-oscillation. And that was a neat thing to do. It wasn't something you were going to use every single day, but it was fun and it always put a smile on your face. So fast forward to this pedal coming out, and it has some similar concepts and seemed more usable. So when it was first announced, I was pretty stoked. But before we get into the crazy stuff it can do, let's address the basics. So first, the amount of drip in the pedal. The amount of drip in the pedal is more in the realm of amp spring levels, not 6G15 levels. The drip is a bit stiff sounding due to the shorter spring tank and the design of the circuit. There are pretty much four basic settings I always look for with spring reverb. The first is typically a darker tone, one that can give some lead work a little space but not have the reverb tail get in the way. In other words, these settings typically work good for blues or jazz leads. The second is a lively or brighter spring setting, where the tails have some life to them, but still pretty clean sounding. That allows a bit more life for your passages, especially in snappy ones. And this setting can have either a short or long tail. The third one is an overdriven spring sound, which I typically use for spaghetti western type tones, which is trashy, washed out, lo-fi, dirty, however you want to describe it. And the last settings I use are, are surf settings, which can have the spring tank overdriven. The drip is mandatory in those settings. The pedal will do the first three just fine. It isn't the best option for surf due to the factors that I've mentioned. Aside from that, this pedal is extremely versatile and gets all the sounds that I want. As far as tone shaping for an actual real spring reverb pedal, this is the best you're going to get out there currently. There are tons of tone shaping options, and the knobs are highly interactive with each other. This is both a blessing and a curse. For example, if you plan to use optical at all, you need to know how to adjust the optical sensors to get the right resonant frequency for your bass tone that you like. This is a secondary function in most modes. And if you set that, or if it is set, to something that doesn't appeal to you, and you don't know how to change it, then you're going to think this pedal sounds like crap. I can't stress enough that getting the frequency right on your optical sensors is very key to getting the most out of this pedal. Once you get the hang of levels, tone, resonant frequency, drive, and how they interact with each other, this pedal is infinitely less complicated. Optics mode is where you should spend the majority of your time until you have the basics down and understand how the pedal works. It has the least amount going on, no secondary control on the control knob, and it's the easiest to grasp. Once you know how to shape your bass tone to something you like, then the rest is pretty easy from there, for the most part. Now, having owned quite a few real spring reverb tanks, units, uh, outboard units, amps, etc., having gating on your reverb tail is greatly appreciated. I paid so much for units that have no gating. You're basically stuck with whatever the reverb tank gives you. So whatever the decay time on that is, you're stuck with. Aside from dialing back tone to be really dark, so the tail perceivably fades faster, or dialing back your drive, there's literally nothing you can do to shorten the tail on most units. With this pedal, you have both the option to gate and duck the reverb signal. This is extremely useful, and I have to give it up to Game Changer Audio for implementing a great gate on this reverb. Typically, I'm not a fan of gates on anything but fuzz, but they did a wonderful job here. The volume fades out smoothly, and it sounds natural. Ducking, I'm typically not a fan of ducking. I've never really found a great use for it that gets along with my playing style, but here I find it useful and super interesting when you mix it with delay after the pedal. I tried to showcase a little bit of this. Now moving on from optics mode, sweep mode is fan freaking tastic. Here you're controlling the optical sensor pairs for the optical spring verb. But if you played with any type of real spring reverb units, especially ones that have higher treble content in their verb signal, you'll know that certain frequencies resonate in a spring tank more than others. So for instance, on a 615, if you're playing notes up a fretboard, you'll hit a certain note, and that note will reverberate more than any other note that you played up to that point, and ring out quite loudly. Choosing your optical sensor pairs is kind of like setting where your tank resonates. What frequencies is it going to accentuate? Basically, what you need to know here are ones towards the very top or louder, and typically have higher treble content, and pairs towards the middle or darker and lower in volume. But I can literally zone out to sounds in this mode all day long. It sounds absolutely great. 
Now trim mode, pay attention to that portion of the video because you need to know how to set which signal the tremolo is applying to. If you do that wrong, it's going to sound subtle and you're probably going to hate it. But if you understand how it works, then it's real easy to shape that mode. And also with any of these modes, make sure you set your optical sensor pairs to your lagging. Now aside from optics mode, setting the optical sensor pairs is a secondary function on the control knob in all other modes but the optics. Delay mode was cool, however, there should have been a repeats control. In addition, depending on which optical sensor pairs you've chosen, some of the repeat volumes are just way too low. So I would have liked to have seen greater volume output on the optical control. Now feedback mode was the hardest to tame, obviously. It can be done with a lot of adjusting, but it's extremely easy for that mode to get out of control, which is why when I'm using it, I typically, as demonstrated in the video, will use it with momentary and keep tails on. It's actually real cool to add a delay after that and then swell in feedback as you're playing. Now harmonic mode, they've kind of equated to shimmer, which I don't think it sounds like shimmer at all, but basically that mode just to me sounds like a thousand ghost choir singing in the background as you play. The thing is haunted, but my overall thoughts, the pedal isn't a safe pedal. It can do traditional stuff well and it can do crazy well, but you need to know your controls in order to get the best of either of those worlds. If you wander around blind, you'll probably get a crap ton of non-ideal results for you. I would have liked to have seen greater level on the optical verb tones. If there's a lot of treble content in the pair of optical sensors that you chose, then it's not an issue, but darker tones can be way too quiet. Yes, presets would have absolutely been killer here. There's just too much you can do with this pedal, too many settings, too many great sounds that you can dial in. The problem here especially is with secondary functions. Even if you take pictures of your settings, you're not going to know where the secondary functions are set to. So you'll need to record your settings down on paper. Now keep in mind the secondary controls that you can adjust are setting the envelope control, setting what the expression pedal is controlling, and then setting your optical sensor pairs in any mode except for optic mode. The delay mode should have had some type of repeats control. And the last thing I'll mention is the expression pedal should have been able to have been tied to the dry signal which would have been very useful so there's always things in retrospect you would change on a pedal if you had the chance but overall i really like this pedal i think it's super innovative i think the ui design is incredible i think it works both with standard bass sounds really well as well as the crazy stuff you can get from it that right there is a hard thing to do especially with a real spring tank so I want to say very big kudos to Game Changer Audio for taking a new approach to things. It's exciting to see what you guys are coming out with, and I appreciate the work you've done on this pedal. It's a thumbs up for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and stay tuned for more pedal reviews in the future. Hope you have a great day. Thanks. Bye.